Hello there guys and girls, this is Pixel and today I'm bringing out a video that I've been wanting to make for many many months now and that is a big Rocket League tip video. As I've been drifting between Champ 1 and Champ 2 for the past 4 seasons on Rocket League, this video is mainly going to be targeted at sort of diamond players who are trying to hit champion and maybe champion players who are trying to improve their games such as myself. This video will do well for myself. And of course if you're in the platinum ranks, gold ranks, then you can apply these tips to help you improve in those ranks as well. I put 20 in the title because it's around about there. I think there's a couple more, but 20 sounds cool. But before I get into those, I want to give a massive shout out to the sponsor of this video, and that is Gamerlink. If you don't know what it is, it is a worldwide app that can allow you to find specific players on games such as Rocket League. Like, if you want to take the information from this video and try and hit champion, you can use specific beacon searches and hashtags on Gamerlink to find players that are best for you to match up with, up with such as players that are the same rank as you, players that have such an attributes and skills, and it'll be the best way with this video to rank up in Rocket League. Season 7's a grind. What can I say? So massive shout out to you guys for sponsoring this video and you can also check them out using the link in the description and of course there is the Pixelami badge and the Pixelami clan on there that you can join as well. Now I've been playing Rocket League properly for a year and a half, a little bit less recently, but the one thing that I've really learned is that basics are the most important, okay? No matter how cool a freestyle looks or a ceiling shot or a, a double touch, anything sick and fancy like that, it can't win you a game 99% of the time, you know? A freestyle from your goal onto the ceiling, onto the ball, into their net. That looks insane. If you can pull it off, that's great. But it's not going to win you games in ranked. It's like when I went to Gfinity a couple weeks ago to meet Marky Duda, who was the RLCS champion of Season 2 and runner-up of Season 1. And you'd expect kind of flashy plays from one of the best players in the world, wouldn't you? That's definitely not what happened. Mark trashed both Max and I in a 1v1 and then in a 2v1. And he didn't do one flashy play. He just was consistent and clinical with the basic moves. He barely went up the wall, only when he had to. And this just created a minimal risk situation with a very high reward. He was just putting them in the net, shot after shot after shot, and it was very hard to defend against. And that's what makes a pro player. They aren't necessarily the best freestylers. There are some exceptions, but they're just the best and most consistent with the basics. And that's why I think this video will help me and perhaps other people around my level sort of champ rank, even champ two. It's basically just taking these tips and becoming more consistent with them, because that's all it is. When you get past champion, it's just the players who are more consistent at the basics that perform perform well and get higher up through the ranks and go on to grand champion, etc. Firstly, I will say to be assertive with your gameplay. Now, that doesn't mean to be aggressive and going for everything, but do the things you do with conviction because if you don't know what you're doing, it'll be hard for your teammates to know what you're doing and then everything can get a little bit messy. So don't sort of hesitate. If you want to go for something, go for it. And obviously that's with you using your judgment as to whether or not it's a good idea to go for it in the first place. You get the point. Be assertive with your gameplay. Obviously, there's basic mechanics that you should know. You know, there's double jump aerials and then the variation of that because there's two types. There's one where you just tap X twice, then boost up. That's quite slow. And I learned, I think at the end of 2016, a thing called the slingshot aerial, which is kind of the thing pe most people do. Um, but it's basically, you know, where you, you jump and then you pitch your car up and jump again. And it gives you a lot of extra speed when you're flying through the air. As well as double jump aerials, you also need to know when to save your jump reset, either for a clear or a pass or in a dribble, like you could do a delayed flick or something because if they see you jump up, they might try and get the ball there, then you can delay the flick and get it over them. You just need to know when to use the double jump, but don't double jump for every single aerial because it's probably not the best idea in each situation. There's a lot that I've got to say in this video, so I'm just sort of filming this face cam and then just putting gameplay in the background. So hopefully the gameplay will be footage of me somewhat following my advice. Obviously, I've got a lot to work on, but this next mechanic is the half flip. Now, there are some people at diamond level who can't half flip and it really can save the day. Like, you can tackle someone with a half flip. If they're coming at you, you can half flip into them and attack. You can make a save that you wouldn't have otherwise made with a half flip. Or you can just simply retreat back to your own half with a half flip. So, on the screen, I'll basically show you how to do it. It's simple, really. It's just a back flip. You then hold up on your analog stick as you back flip. And then use your air roll button. It can be used with the air roll left option, which is the easiest. That's what I tend to use. It's like the L3. That's what I have my air roll left to, where you flip backwards, you hold up, and then press in L3, and you just twist around, but you don't have to do that. If you don't feel comfortable just using air roll left, you can just use your normal air roll and move the analog stick the correct way. That works fine. It's just not as easy, in my opinion. Really work on your recovery and air rolling your car onto the wall, etc, etc, because if you get bumped or something, or you go for an aerial and you just leave your car to fly and smash into the wall, it's not, it's not very ideal. If you can just Figure out how the mechanics of your car works when you're air rolling. You can actually use it to just catch yourself on the wall. If you have awareness of the pitch around you and you think, right, at this speed, 
and where I am, I'm going to hit the wall before I hit the ground. So you just turn your car with your air roll so that you land on the wall perfectly. And this next one isn't necessary for champ, but if I'm honest, it does help you and it's the wave dash. It's basically a mechanic that helps you maintain momentum and possibly even gain a bit of speed, I think, jumping off the wall uh, or off the goal or something like that. Essentially, all you have to do is use one jump to come off the wall and if within the one and a half seconds the jump reset fades away, you can reach the ground. You then pitch your car slightly up so that your back wheels touch the ground and then dash forward. So it actually pushes your car onto the ground and forward. It's a very good way, like I said, to maintain momentum. It can get you to passes that you otherwise wouldn't be able to reach or saves or anything like that. So keep working on that in free play and I think that will really help your game and you'll start doing it like it's nothing. It will become second nature to you. The next tip I would say is to use air roll to create better hits and angles and new opportunities for you when you're hitting the ball. Now, it's very easy when you're in the lower ranks to sort of jump up and then hit the ball straight forward. But if you aerial to either the left or the right, it can help you get angles that otherwise you wouldn't have had. And it really does open up a lot of opportunities. You can also air roll to try and hit the ball on the very corner of your car to give the ball the maximum power to create the most threatening shot. Now, I'll be honest, kickoffs in 2v2 and 3v3 really aren't as crucial for hitting champ as they are in 1v1. Obviously, if you want to hit in champ in 1v1, you have to have a very good kickoff. But in 2v2s and especially 3v3s, you can get away with it as long as you make contact on the ball because there's always someone backing you up. It doesn't matter if the other team essentially wins the kickoff because in threes, that can sometimes be useful. If they push the ball past you, your team can then push back while you rotate back for boost or something. So kickoffs aren't really that necessary to be like really well polished at the champ ranks in 2v2s and 1v1s because you've got teammates to cover you for that. The next tip I would give you is to gain as much of an understanding of the Rocket League physics as possible. So just whack the ball around in free play, that sort of stuff. Reading the ball and perhaps pre-jumping to hit the ball off the wall or the backboard is super, super good. Whether that's attacking, you know, in the kickoffs when both cars smash into each other and the ball flies to one of the side walls. If the guy at the back on one of the teams can pre-jump before it's even hit the side wall, the chances are they're going to get the first touch on the ball as it bounces back to the middle. And the same for defending off the backboard. If you can jump up from inside the net with the intention of hitting the ball after it hits the backboard, you're going to stop anyone coming in using the backboard aerial or the double touch technique before they do it. So it's very useful to be able to read the ball when it bounces off the wall and get those pre-jumps working. I always say that all you have to do to win in Rocket League is not concede. Like, it sounds obvious, but let's take attacking out of the equation. If you can defend better than the other team, then you win. Like, attacking opportunities can come from their mistakes, so don't sacrifice your strength at the back to try and push for a goal that simply might not be there, okay? If there's no chance of you putting it in the net, just keep your defense solid because, like I said, if you take attack out, if you don't concede, you cannot physically lose. No one has ever lost a Rocket League game by letting in zero goals. It's simple. It sounds simple but it, it, it just is. I would say clearances at the diamond and champion ranks are super important because people are going to be taking advantage of your mistakes a lot more. You have to try and get big clears that aren't easy for the enemy to just return fire back at you because especially if you've got not much boost, it's easy to just try and hit the ball and get something on it when in reality that isn't always the best thing because that something could be the perfect pass back to them for them to then use all their boost to smash it past you when you've still got nothing left. It can be really easy to panic when you're defending, which actually causes you to smash it straight into the side wall, which is usually a very bad thing to do. Because if you think about it, if you smash it, smash it directly into the side wall, it's going to bounce back to the same place you hit it. The only difference is, is that you're no longer there to deal with it. And if you were panicked enough to smash it into the side wall, the chances are it was a dangerous position. So you don't want to put the ball back in the position, but remove yourself from the situation because that never goes right. It usually ends up as a through ball for the other team where they can just slot it in the net. One thing I will say is not to be afraid of hitting the ball in defense. So if you're coming back from attack and you see the ball fly over you and go to the backboard, don't leave it because you're, you know, you're past the ball already. You're not goal side. Don't leave the ball. You can go up for an aerial and smash it into your own backboard. One, that usually gets a good clear, especially if you pinch it around the side. That would work really well. But also you can put them off with their aerials and stuff. You don't have to just drive on the ground and get in the goal and try and save it. That's very difficult. And it really is a lot easier to just smash it as hard as you can into your own backboard because unless it's the awkward situation where you do sort of stick to the ball and it just drops down, which doesn't happen often, you're usually going to be okay. One thing you have to try and start doing at Diamond and Champion rank is just accept that you can't do everything in the game. Okay, so at Diamond and Champion rank, your teammates aren't as much as you would like to believe in your tilted state of mind, completely incompetent at the game. So I would go into games assuming that your teammates have a similar skill to you and don't cut them off with every save, shot or pass that they try and make because that will lead to a double commitment which usually leaves holes in your defense which is never good. So 
Put a bit of trust in your teammates. I know it can then be annoying, say, if one's particularly bad or having a bad day or something goes wrong a lot for one player. That is annoying, but it's better than just clashing with them all the time. Try and maintain some sort of structure in your gameplay. So you're at a plat, you're in diamond, you're trying to get to champ, and once you've acknowledged that you need your teammates to win, you can actually start really utilizing the passing plays. Even if you're solo queuing, you'd be surprised because... I mean, like, if you're ever feeling tentative with the ball, the chances are champ rank players will often be there waiting for a pass to help you out. So, utilize that. Ground passes or sweaty goals, they're great and they're really trouble keepers because they don't know whether to try and block the pass, block your potential shot if you don't pass it, or block the shot of the person you're passing to. So, you, it's a super annoying thing to, for keepers to deal with and you can also generate a lot of power from a ground passing play if you hit it at the right angle. And again, when you're solo queuing at this rank, don't be afraid to pass back. Like, people will expect a backwards pass if they can see you behind the ball driving back and then the other team on the storm. They can see that you could pass it back and they'll be waiting for it to then get the clear. And similarly, if you simply can't make the shot, don't just bail on the ball and rotate back. Try and make something happen. Try and pass the ball to your teammates by like smashing it into the backboard because more often than not, if you hit the ball somewhere around the, not, uh, around the net but not intending it as a shot, a keeper will have to go up for it and try and save it. Unless they've got balls of steel, they will have to go up and make a save. And that forced save will take them out of the game when it's actually just a pass to your teammates who can then follow it up and potentially put it in with either no goalkeeper or one less goalkeeper to deal with. Now, this next tip is huge if you want to make it in champ and really stay there. Now, I get a lot of people saying that I don't deserve champ, but I have been that rank for nearly a year now, and I think it is due to my positioning on the pitch and my rotation. You have to try and play as a team. Don't go up for everything and isolate the last man. And similarly, try not to get stuck as an isolated last man. Try and keep the rotation flowing. If you are stuck in goal, it can be really hard to find time to leave the goal and, and rotate forward. It's It gets very difficult, like sometimes teammates will half rotate or not rotate at all. But on the flip side, you need to allow your teammates time to rotate back, okay? I played with a guy the other day and he was just pushing up with us without giving us any chance to rotate back and it really caused problems because then we ended up with all three of us up there and all three of us trying to get back because he pushed up. If you're the last one back either in a three-man or a two-man situation and your teammate or teammates ha are, have gone up the pitch and they've missed an attack or something and they're both retreating back and the other team has the ball and they're sort of moving forward, the thing you should be thinking about doing right now is just stalling and buying time. A really good way to do this is actually shadow defense. There are tutorials of this on YouTube. It's basically where, you know, it's like you incorporate fake challenges and just position yourself in a way that they can't just scoot right past you and you're buying your, your teammates time to get back to the net, basically. Another plus side to this is that when your teammates are rotating back, they can potentially remove the threat by bumping or demoing or even tackling the player that's on the storm from the other team, and that can really help, and then you can push forward. So just bide your time. Don't throw yourself at the ball if you're the last man. Your teammates aren't behind you, because if you miss it, it's guaranteed goal for the other team unless they whiff it terribly, which at this rank they shouldn't be doing. But then of course you have to beware if you spend too much time shadowing or do one too many fake challenges, you'll give yourself no time to save it, you know? Your teammate doesn't have to be straight in the net behind you for you to go and attack it. If they've rotated back and they're both on the corner boosts, it's safe to say that you can most likely challenge them now and then by the time the shot comes past you, if it does, your teammates will have gone from the corner boost to the net. They don't have to be right behind you for you to then think about making the move. Solid rotation means you won't be bunched up with your teammates and it allows you to fully utilize your own space on the pitch, which can help you create chances in attack, such as passing plays along the ground or in the air that otherwise wouldn't have been there if you all, say, charged down the left wing. If you space yourself out, there's one man back in the right sort of half, there's one in the left mid, then there's one pushing up the right with the ball. You can create something there that the goalkeepers won't be able to handle. If you're all on one section of the pitch it's very difficult to do that now by this rank players will be trying to read the way you play one way or another which makes mind games a lot more viable and effective at this rank than in the lower ranks in which players just would throw themselves at the ball without thinking what you could potentially do with it like trying to fake a bronze player in rocket league is very difficult because they're not trying to anticipate where you're going they're just gonna go straight at you there was a saying i can't remember where i heard it, it was probably in a film or something and it said good hockey players skate to where the puck is and great hockey players skate to where the puck is going to be. 
Now, the bronze players, they go straight to where the ball is. Whereas at this rank, people are trying to go to where the ball is going to be. They'll pre-jump or something like that. And that is where you can utilize the mind games. You can either fake them out if they just jump straight away from it. Or you can sort of double bluff them. Make it look like you're going for a fake with the little wobble that your car does. They'll think you're faking. They'll wait. And then you can just flick it past them with a lot of speed. So mind games are very effective at champ rank. When you get to like grand champion sort of level, players can tell like they don't fall for double bluffs, triple bluffs. They don't fall for mind games very often at all but champion and diamond is kind of like the prime place to, to get your mind games in in my opinion a good way of improving your mind game and the ability to read the game yourself is putting yourselves in the shoes of other players whether that's your opposition or your teammates like you can then use this to determine what the best thing to do would be in most situations like if you are dribbling with the ball and you know you're going to try some mind games you could try and put yourself in their shoes and think right what mind games is going to try and then that's when you can double bluff him and, and stuff like that and if you know what your teammates are thinking you'll know the best times to pass the ball and everything like that it is tough sometimes but it's not good to be toxic so everyone makes mistakes and if you start slating your teammates it just it never ends well literally never so just be sure to have fun and relax like it's so easy to get tilted sometimes very tilted after games but it is just a game at the end of the day that you play to have fun and if you keep practicing you will hit your game goals and when you do it feels amazing like we all know that feeling like if you're in diamond rank when you got promoted to diamond or if you're about to hit champ when you get promoted to champ it feels insane and it feels like you've really accomplished something especially if you know that you've worked for it you can practice a lot of these skills such as you know reading the physics of the game or you know improving your pre-jump game and stuff in loads of training packs they're all over rockley just check them out free play if you just literally hit the ball around like at a really high speed you can read it off the wall you can control it you can dribble it you can even try those fancy ceiling shots if you really want to and even just play unranked matches to get the experience that way you can try the fancy stuff if you want to work on that but also really try and work on your game as well i remember well over a year ago when i couldn't do any sort of air dribble from the wall i watched a jazer video and then i went into free play and i must have done about 500 attempts and and i just I couldn't hit it. I just did like 500 attempts in free play. Just like tried it, failed, restart. I did that for two hours or something. Just going up the wall, taking the ball off the wall and putting it in the net. Even if I didn't drag it, I just wanted to get it off the wall, into the net, through the air. Like literally... People do underestimate the, the power of free play because it does take a lot of time. But if you put that work in, it's inevitable that you're going to get better. Because if you're watching this video, you're decent at the game. So think back to how you were when you first started the game. When I first played the game, I played on keyboard and mouse on a really bad laptop at about 20 frames. And I didn't do any tutorials. I hadn't seen really any videos apart from a few of my friends. I went into my first ranked game and I almost uninstalled the game because of how hard it was. So you've come a long way. Yes, you've got a long way to go if you want to become a pro player. But you can get there if you put the hours in. You've got to put a lot of hours in, but it, it, it's fun. It's good stuff. Anyway, that is going to be it for my 20 main tips in Rocket League if you're around about the Diamond Champ rank. Now, this is a lot longer than I thought. I didn't think it would be as in-depth as I've made it, but either way... I think it's a pretty good video. So if you want to take these tips and head into Rocket League, then you can always go to Gamerlink and find teammates who are wanting to rank up to the same ranks as you. It's a really great app. Once again, it's in the description. Thank you so much, Gamerlink, for sponsoring the video. If you did enjoy this, then be sure to leave a like on it. Subscribe today to join the Pixel Army. I have been Pixel. You have been awesome. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.